Looking to cut down on food waste and time spent in the kitchen? HelloFresh sends you pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow recipes so you can get dinner on the table in just 20 minutes. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 10footballers and use the code 10footballers for 10 free meals, including free shipping. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Welcome in. Tuesday, March 2nd. Back at it. Another week. More fantasy football to talk about. Some some DST chatter. DST chatter? Mm -hmm. A little bit of, we're going to, you know. Yeah. It's not often focused on on this show, but there's a little bit of chatter. Well, we're every gonna... every uh, every March brings a new surprise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. We'll tease that for a moment. <laughs> we'll tease it for a moment. Uh, you can follow the show on Instagram, Instagram.com slash Fantasy Footballers, Twitter at the FF Ballers, and the website's the Fantasy Footballers.com. Welcome in, everybody. Mike Wright here, Jason Moore. I'm Andy Holloway. Great show for you today. We got to uh, toss a coin into the wishing well. At the top of the show, make some free agency. I guess they're not even wishes. predictions, <laughs> right? They're they're just wishes. That's why we theme our segments. Yeah, real deft, real special. Uh, Jointhefoot.com is the community, and uh, I, I guess we'll save the excitement for the news segment, and um, instead we'll we'll start here. The wishing well. What do you most want to see happen in free agency? Mm-hmm. We have our full preview and predictions next week. NFL free agency set to start very, very soon. But give me your uh, your best case scenario for a certain player, certain team. Well, what do I want personally then? And if you're talking about Mike Wright, I want improvements for my own dynasty team. And for me, that means Aaron Jones to simply – Sign somewhere else. Go make so much money, Mr. Jones, and free. This has nothing to do with Aaron no, Jones. No, nothing. Look, Aaron Jones, great guy. Been, been good for fantasy football. But uh, Everything I, I hear about him. But uh, I had uh, I drafted A.J. Dillon in last year's rookie draft, so I would very much like to see right, well, what his quads get done. You you just want him yeah. out of Green Bay. Yeah. But what do you think is his best landing spot? It, the best landing spot yeah. for Jones, it's Miami I, yeah, I for agree. me. Uh, look, for, for me, I, I – I want Jameis Winston mm-hmm. to come back to starting NFL quarterback level. It's great for fantasy, and I want him going to the Denver Broncos. I, I, we've talked about this before, but Noah Fant, Corland Sutton, Jerry Judy, these are three players I like that I do not want any part of. You in- don't want this. I do you want per- this. No, you don't. Oh, how- There's <laughs> no one more irresponsible than... Then Drew Locke. Oh, wait. There's Jameis Winston. Yeah, but what does that I mean, matter? I don't care that the Broncos win games. They can go 0-16. I just want the fantasy points. And and when he was a Buccaneer, I mean, you you had Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. Uh, there Drew isn't... Locke is in training to become Jameis no. Winston. That's no, no, his no. actual no, it's, They are very pattern. different. Look, you, call, you, you let Drew Locke know you're showing up at, at the airport. He just doesn't show up. Jameis gets there. It's... Look, he like he's like an hour late. Wrong he, side of the airport. But he at least gets there eventually. Good things still happen when Jameis Winston's the quarterback. I just think you can want more for your Broncos pass catching weapons than Jameis Winston. But I mean, this is free agency. Who what what so you could the only other name you could throw out there would be Ryan Fitzpatrick. But I want more for Ryan Fitzpatrick. I, I want <laughs> I want him to go to the Washington football team and, yeah. and win. I want him to go into the playoffs. And, uh, you know, have a good team over there. All right, I'm going to help you out, Jason, because I know there's only one thing you want more than apparently Jameis Winston to the Denver Broncos this offseason. Do tell. And that is uh, you want Jalen Hurts to be all that he can be. (laughs) You want to see that completion percentage creep up into the mid-50s. MVP. Who's coming with MVP? MVP. 
I'm no, a, I'm just, no I'm, I can't do that. All right. Well, this just, is why it's troubling that we have the show we have because if I didn't dislike Jalen Hurts, he wouldn't like him this much. I don't think that's true. I know that's true. <laughs> Chris Godwin to Philadelphia. Thank you. I'll say Chris Godwin to Philadelphia. This is uh, perfect for a couple of reasons. One, it gets a very reliable security blanket for Jalen Hurts. Two, it puts Chris Godwin in the position where he is a completely unrivaled number one option for a team. That is hard to come by when you are uh, heading into free agency in general. It's an opportunity for Godwin to be drafted highly in fantasy and provide uh, the kind of weapon that Jalen Hurts is going to need to be consistent, uh, both for fantasy and for NFL purposes. So I think Godwin to Philly would be interesting. I'm going to throw one last wish out there because this one is actually, this is just, this is as, as altruistic as you get because I have no, uh, I have no skin in this game. I think this is just a wish that all NFL, uh, all NFL fans should root for. Allen Robinson gets a competent quarterback. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't know where it is, but just somewhere where he doesn't play with a steaming pile of crap throwing him the ball like he has done since college. Uh, but qu don't question. Yeah. Uh, may I have the floor? Uh, <laughs> would Jameis Winston satisfy you in that or not? Yes, because he's competent. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay. Because then Alan Robinson could stay right where he is, re-sign with the Bears, and then Winston yeah, could come. Sure. In. That could happen. Yeah. Every time that I want to insult the Winston side of things, I will get the productive numbers of fantasy, but I don't know if it was very enjoyable. That was if if you had Mike Evans or Chris Godwin. No, I mean if you were Mike Evans or Chris Godwin, well, like I it, was. Allen mm -hmm. Robinson needs the ball in his catch radius. That's an area where Winston struggles at times. But Five thousand yards. <laughs> I know. Oh, I know. I. That's why uh, you know they wanted him back so badly. I mean, in it, Tampa, the, it's really all about those interceptions because that's what helps him throw 5,000 yards. And I hope they don't go away wherever he well, lands. Well, it was Bruce Arians, too. Like, Jameis Winston's going to land somewhere, potentially as a starter at some point in time. He's not going to be with Bruce Arians again. So I don't think 5,000 yards and the willy nilly, what was it, 30 interceptions? Yeah, that's yes. correct. I wish that was just, I should have a button that just, that is what it says every time you say something good about him. It, but it, it's it's crazy, man. He completed almost sixty one percent of his passes, had over fifty one hundred yards, thirty three touchdowns. But but he had thirty interceptions. Yeah, and I wonder how many of those were coming back from huge deficits, playing soft defenses, and absolutely. Uh, no, uh, a competent quarterback for Allen Robinson. See, I like that wish, but I always I want to believe that a pos you know that a wish is possible. Oh. oh. You know, when Alan, you're blowing out the uh, candles on the birthday cake, you want it to be possible that it comes yeah. true. And he seems destined for, I mean, he'll probably re-sign. No, don't do it. He'll probably take the money, re-sign in Chicago. Don't do it, Alan. How, do they, how can they let him go? I feel like if you let Allen Robinson go in Chicago, you are rebuilding. Yeah, he could, And they're not going to rebuild in Chicago. He could very well end up on a franchise tag. We, a lot of these big name wide receivers, uh, they've all been thrown out there with the franchise tag opportunity because it's like for for the Lions, for the Bears, it, if they lose their number one, they are they're running on empty at wide receiver. I mean, you're you're asking how can you let him go? They already screwed up. Like you should have re-signed him already. Like dur during the season, you should have given Allen Robinson a contract. Well, he was asking for that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're right. That's not. Uh, it didn't happen, and we'll see where he goes. All right. It's March, so um, this segment's more fun. <laughs> News and notes from around the league. Look. Look, this is great. Um, Mike alluded to some DST news, and we don't, you know, we don't cover a lot of DST news. But um, I know who's number one on my board now. <laughs> The Cardinals are yeah! giving J.J. Watt yeah! a two-year deal. What is happening? Yeah, baby! Thank you, Houston. <laughs> and we didn't even have to trade. They just let him go. Oh, man. Because we destroyed that franchise by trading David Johnson, we got a twofer. 
I mean, like, if we don't do that trade last year, no way we get J.J. Watt. Oh. But, but, yeah, but, but he's washed, but Jason. guys, he's washed. Yeah. That's, no, he's not. That is, that is factually inaccurate. He, Number one most double team player in the NFL last year. Right, yes. Number uh, nine on PFF's pass rushing ranking. Uh, tied for second for tackles for a loss. He's not the best defensive player in the NFL anymore. No, certainly not. But he's not bad. Well, it came out of nowhere, again, just like last year's Hopkins trade, where Arizona was not even rumored as a destination for J.J. Watt. Uh, but now the Cardinals have the number one and number two uh, edge rushers in terms of total sacks since 2012. So uh, that'll work. That's great. Uh, Peter King reporting the NFL is highly likely to have a 17-game regular season in 2021. Uh, this is the first year, according to this new collective bargaining agreement, that they're able to add the 17th game. The sources reporting on this are, in fact, the NFL's bank account. <laughs> right, well, Highly really, likely it, to happen. It is allowed. It is not a guarantee. It's it's not official yet that there will be a 17-week season. But um, from my understanding, they will make more money with mm -hmm. more games. The extra game will be an interconference matchup. The AFC likely to get the extra home game in 21, and then they will alternate. So the NFL will not only add a game, but they'll make something out of it as a unique kind of it sounds fun to me situation. It'd be new for fantasy football players too. Uh, Russell Wilson's agent. Uh, says he has not requested a trade, but if he were dealt, he would waive his no, no trade clause <laughs> for the Cowboys, Saints, Raiders, or Bears, or get me out of here. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying like I want. I want a trade. I'm just saying like the Cowboys, the Saints, the Raiders, the Bears. Those would uh, be great. Just saying, if they send a trade offer over, I'll say yes. <laughs> I mean, this is unlimited. Uh, the options. I mean. I asked the question on Twitter, uh, which, you know, some people took issue with, but the idea of, you know, is it good for the NFL if Russ cooks elsewhere or Russ stays put? And 65% uh, would like him to cook elsewhere. Okay. I think chaos is interesting. Chaos. And Russ leaving Seattle after winning every single year is interesting. Yes, it, it would be a great narrative, uh, awesome to just see. And it, it's one of those science experiments, right? We had this this last season with Tom Brady. Is it Belichick? Is it is it Brady? You know, and there's there's more nuance to it, but obviously Brady won the mm -hmm. the 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 battle. Bill Belichick is uh, the most overrated head coach of all time now. <laughs> That's been scientifically proven by what Brady did. But if Russell Wilson goes somewhere else, then you, you just have uh, that fun narrative of watching. Uh, is it him? Was it Seattle? And is and, that comp, uh, Chicago? Allen Robinson? Does that work for you, Mike? Yes, <laughs> I would. I would uh, accept that. And so would Allen Robinson. I can't believe he wants to go. There. He wants to go somewhere where they're going to let him throw the ball. I mean, that's the issue here: is that Seattle wants to run, play good defense. That's the Pete Carroll way. So I'm surprised he he throws the Bears out there. Another great defensive team that seems like they're you know I mean maybe it's just Mitch Trubisky making them seem so mild on offense but I'm guessing that if Matt Nagy had Russell Wilson we would see a lot more throwing in Chicago yeah that makes sense <laughs> what would you rather here here's a would you rather can I can I throw the ball on, on this down no <laughs> oh. um here's a would you rather you're Allen Robinson in this situation would you rather have a career filled with competent but not exceptional quarterbacks that give you consistent numbers or incompetent quarterbacks for the first five years of your career and then you get – you pay your dues and then you get the Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes years. Uh, man. Like prolific – a few prolific years or a bunch of really good years? It's – where I feel so bad for Allen Robinson is where you're – your situation then turns it like past success equals future success. We've we've mentioned that on the show. But like, so if Allen Robinson had started his career not playing with Blake Bortles, his career trajectory is so much different. You know, when when the market opens up and I mean, he tore his ACL going into free agency, his free agency market was was not great. I mean, he got a just a, what was it a one 
might have been a one year or two year. I can't remember, but it's it was not the type of contract that a player who is is as good as Allen Robinson deserves. And part of that is the quarterbacks that you had to play with. So I would rather take uh, playing with a good quarterback at the beginning, so that I can make sure that I'm making I'm maximizing my NFL money. Oh, I say okay. So the financial benefits, yeah, versus the okay. I'm gonna need the Hall of Fame quarterback. I'm I I would I would choose the other one because I want. I want the chance at greatness, and that won't come with mediocre. You want the play. crazy year where you end up with twenty touchdowns? And- Absolutely. Okay. Um, a report from the Athletic believing Hunter Henry could get ten point five million a year in free agency, which is what Austin Hooper got last year. I could see that for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, is there any particular landing spots for Hunter Henry that would get you hot and bothered? Tennessee, Jacksonville, Carolina, uh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati is probably my favorite destination. Jason, you know what you're doing then. <sighs> I, I'm ruining Drew Sample's <laughs> bright, bright future. I realize that, and that, that would that would be hard for me to 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 swallow that pill. But I do think you know one was of he a start of the week one week. Well, is that what it was? Yeah. Uh, Where I he had he like was, a single he catch. Was, he was taking it up to a one. He was a take oh, it to yeah. 100 player. And, <laughs> and then Jason tried to spin it that his catch percentage right. was in fact 100%. Because there was one, one catch for one. one target. Okay. He, he caught 100% of his passes because... <laughs> you tricked me into spending like 60 fab in our dynasty <laughs> league on him. That's right. Uh, <laughs> I tricked oh, you. You tricked, um, you tricked me. <laughs> but I, I do... One of the uh, quarters I had in my pocket for the wishing well, I didn't, I didn't bring it out was Antonio Brown to the Bengals because I I want good things. I want good things for Joe Burrow. And so plus that chaos of Antonio Brown going into division. It, did you, you say oh, I did good think things yeah. or bad things? I said good th- Antonio Brown just won a Super Bowl, my man. Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> he did. 5000 yards. So, but I, I I would I would like uh I would like the Bengals to upgrade their <laughs> receiving weapons for Joe Burrow. Um, you can do better than Antonio Brown, I think. Well, I I give him Hunter Henry. Uh, Washington going to part ways with Alex Smith. Strange reports. Yeah, I haven't read a lot about them, but just Alex Smith has said the team didn't really want him there, didn't really want to give him a chance, didn't really want him on the roster. It's so surprising. Not how it came across in terms of. Uh, very strange. The PR. I mean, it seemed like through the season, it was like the, he was there. It's hard to tell. Yeah, I mean, when you're comparing to to wanting Dwayne Haskins as your quarterback, it can seem like you anything's better, right? Like you love Alex Smith, right? Even if you don't, apparently. But Mike was bringing this up earlier in the studio, just the fact that you know you're 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 coming into this new franchise. You see the quarterback as an issue. The the quarterback room. And you assume that Alex Smith will never be able to come back, won't be able right. to play football. He's getting paid. And so that uh, that could be a difficult entry into the franchise. But uh, like if, if I had been given the, the coaching position for Washington, you would be doing everything you can to move on from Alex Smith. Like As an organization, it this is unfortunate because this is review, re- removing humanity from the equation. But to do the best thing for the team, I can't count on Alex Smith, who almost had his leg removed and so the story that Smith came was able to come back and played okay football but I'm sure that was a very difficult thing for the Washington management to handle pretty tough for Alex too yes trying to make a comeback to win comeback player of the year in an environment that you didn't feel comfortable yeah and you didn't feel like people were rooting for you to do that apparently uh 49ers have reached out to the Panthers about a potential trade for Teddy Bridgewater Okay. They must hate Garoppolo. Because Bridgewater is not, to me, I think Garoppolo is better than Bridgewater. It's not even an argument worth having because neither one is great. But, like, why would you, they, is, Bridgewater is not an answer to the Garoppolo problem. That's just so weird to me. No, he's just he's another at, Garoppolo. He, he's, right. He's good at the short stuff, though. Yeah. He can find Brandon Ayuk on a four yard in, he can hand it off to Debo on an end around. Mm hmm. I think that they are done with Jimmy G, and that's what the the one message that's been here uh, in my mind all year long, the way that they've talked about trades. I think that they realize they've maybe hit a wall with, and, and he's been hurt a lot. Not that Bridgewater is the solution to that problem either. 
But what choice do you have? Yeah. I would say they did get to a Super Bowl with him, but Jared Goff got there too. He got yeah. the boot. Yeah. A uh, couple of cap casualties. Texans released uh, three down running back Duke Johnson. Bill O'Brien is really bad. <laughs> it was. Was really, really bad at his that job. franchise <laughs> is in trouble. Yeah. Um, but at least they can rebuild with none, none of their draft picks this year. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's crazy because the well, how but like how many sacks is is JJ Watt going to get for the Houston Texans this year? Let, let let this be a lesson to those of you who think the NFL should behave like a fantasy football team, because Bill O'Brien did everything he could do to run the franchise exactly how maybe an inexperienced person would run it. Go all in. I will go ahead and. Uh, Trade for Duke Johnson. I'm gonna I'm gonna trade away my picks for protection for Deshaun Watson. I'm gonna trade away my future. And um this is gonna be a long, long journey out of this hole. Well, what Bill O'Brien forgot is you're supposed you trade your future for now, but he traded the future and then he traded the present. Yeah. Which but, is it's not how so the all, you have, all you're left with is the past. Yes. In the past well, they they also got rid of the past because JJ Watt is no oh, longer uh, part of the franchise. So and um, he just gets so like Bill O'Brien's punishment should not he should correct. have to be correct. there. Correct, right? He not, should have to like have the losingest record in NFL history on his record. It's not fair because when they win rehire one rehire Bill O'Brien when they win one That's game this season, yeah. Bill O'Brien's gonna be like, see, <laughs> yeah, see how good I was. We were winning games. Rehire Bill O'Brien. That is the new plan. Now, if you're a Texans fan, do you become an Arizona Cardinals fan because, like, your they're a farm team? Yes, because they feed into the you, Cardinals. Or you're welcome. Do you hate the Cardinals? They hate us because they <laughs> ruined your franchise. They definitely like, hate us. Well, but just come then. Look, if you can't beat them, join them, and I yes. we welcome yes. you to our side. And yes. when you get here, yes. we'll put some music on put for the, you. Oh. Cute. oh. This is this is the official open invitation. Dance with us. If you are a Houston Texans fan, is that what and, we're doing? And you yes. are you're willing to, to jump ship and get out. Be an Arizona Cardinal fan. Join us. Yes, it's, you're welcome. Here. All are welcome. Houston has a problem. <laughs> uh, Adam Humphreys released as well. Oh, pronounced with an Humphreys. Yeah, saving four point seven five million dollars from the Titans. If you didn't know where Adam Humphreys <laughs> was. <laughs> yeah. All right, we are going to move into some mailbag answer your questions. Before we do that, I want to thank today's sponsor, our good friends at Harry's. Look, guys, guys, too often you're choosing between fair price, high quality. Too often. Too often. No, 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 no. You don't have to make that choice with Harry's. They give you award-winning blades at a factory direct price. We choose both. We choose both, yeah. Yeah. Uh <laughs> Resist making a Texans <laughs> joke. All right. Uh, Harry's, you know them. If you've listened to the show, uh, I've used Harry's for probably four or five years now. Close, comfortable shave, fair price, $2 per refill. That is the real uh, special sauce with Harry's, too. They have a great offer to get you started, but then you don't pay a lot to refill because you always need new blades. Um, and they combine a simple ergonomic design with five sharp blades they source their steel from Sweden. I don't even source my steel from Sweden. And they manufacture. You I know. Oh, I know. you do now through right. Harry's. Right. I guess technically that's, I have to buy a lot. Uh, and manufacture their blades in their world-class blade factory. And for a limited time, Harry's has an exclusive offer for listeners of this show. Because new customers can get a Harry's starter set and free body wash. I just got the body wash in the mail the other day. For just $3.00. At harrys.com slash footballers. That's a $16 value for three bucks. That's, yeah, I saw you reading that. You're like, this can't be right. I, I, <laughs> like, I, there's that's, a, uh, producers, there's a typo misprint. here that says only $3. You get a five-blade razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel, gel, travel cover, and a travel size body wash. Wow, that is a deal. Go to harrys.com slash footballers to redeem your offer. Got them pipes ready, Mike? <laughs> Hi. Yes. <laughs> Hope that means yes. <laughs> Mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was good. That was good. 
All right, if you have a question for the show, you can visit the website, click the submit a question button, or dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. We've got some voicemail calls on the show today, some questions from Twitter and jointhefoot.com and elsewhere. So let's start with a uh, let's start with one of those voicemails. Hi, ballers. This is Dan out of Lincoln, Nebraska, a happy owner of the 2020 UDK, so good job there. Oh, but my good job to you. Is, is there a player that comes to mind as someone who you forget just how good they are until you watch tape, like until you watch film of them? My answer would be Austin Eckler, For just every time I watch him, I'm like, wow, he really is good. But uh, thanks. Have a good day. I, I definitely have a name popping into my head, which is Kareem Hunt. I think Kareem Hunt sure. being quote unquote second fiddle in Cleveland made people forget like this was a prolific RB one kind of game changing runner. The fact that he, he just runs through tackles on a regular basis uh, that in, in a way that other running backs can't, uh, you know, we, we, we talk about having a case of the Beasles. Um, yeah, baby. But like Cole yes. Beasley is yes. actually sure. someone that when you sure. watch, you're like, the dude is a gamer. I mean, he's really good. He's always open. He catches everything, and he's not afraid of contact, even though he's a little bitty baby thing out there. So I, I, I think he's a really good football player. Uh, and, and it's not it's that a you, good one. You, not that you forget, really, but it, maybe you're not watching these games. But I'll just go with a twofer in Minnesota: Dalvin Cook and uh, and Adam Thielen. Like when you actually. Watch them play. Not just look at your box score afterwards. We're like, oh, man, Devil Cook getting me fantasy points. Go watch how he's actually getting the fantasy points, and you realize that he is an elite-tier running back in the NFL. Yeah, Kyle Juszczyk, man. If you're taking, yes. if you're just talking about a film guy that's yes. like not always a fantasy guy, goodness gracious. Has he ever thrown a pass? I, if he has, he completed it. It had to be for a <laughs> touchdown. Okay. All right. Dynasty question on Instagram. New 10-team Dynasty League startup draft. Who ends up going number one? Whoever is taken there. I mean, like, who would I take at the 101? Yeah, I think that's the question, Mike. What a dumb answer, Mike. Well, phrase your question better. <laughs> who goes 101? If it's me, uh, I would take Tyreek Hill there. Yeah. It, I, would, I would assume the risk. Right, the risk because of the off-the-field stuff. Yes. Um, I, I keep going back and forth in my own head between uh, Devontae Adams and Tyreek Hill. Uh, less risk, but more age with Adams. But it would be it would be between those two Do players you, for me. Like, it is Stephon Diggs in the running for you there? No, no. Okay. He's, he's the next tier down at wide receiver. Tyreek Hill is a, another answer to the what player jumps out on film, even though you know they're good mm -hmm. as well. Because every time you watch him, you're like, wow. It's not fair. No. Because what's crazy is he can stop as fast as he can go, and he can go real fast. Yeah, and, and has stayed healthy. Yeah, that is that is weird. Because Despite, cause he's got the same disease that uh, Mike Williams has, which is he goes right. up and he falls real hard to the ground, but he seems to stay pretty much healthy. Less mass. Less mass to right. fall to the earth. Yeah. Imagine you jumped up as high as Mike oh, Williams. Oh, I'm injured. <laughs> I'm injured. My only hope is that the cushion of uh, we'll call Would it that cause a divot <laughs> in the in it's the, called the crater. Yeah, yeah, the crater in the <laughs> turf. Sorry. We are not nice people. No, not. no that was a, I felt that bad was the worst one. one. I know, Mike. Mike just jumped in. Um, we love you, buddy. <laughs> I know. I know. You wouldn't cause a crater. No, just a just a large <laughs> divot. Not, not killing no dinosaurs over here. I'm just going to hurt people while they try to run through that area where I fell before. That's it. Rope it All off. Right. Rope it yep, off. Yep, we're going <laughs> to... We get the groundskeeper over here. Jay fell again. I mean, this isn't really... I mean, the odds of you getting that high in the air... I know. That's what's really dumb about this and being lost in the equation is yeah, even though at our... Somehow a stepladder appeared right. on the field. Even though at our combine, I did have the highest no, you high didn't. jump. I sure did. Check the tape. Oh, um, my god. Yeah, we have checked the tape. These quads don't lie. Cheater. All right. Um, <laughs> should let you have that after what we just put you through. Oh. Did you say these quads don't lie? Mm-hmm. That's right. Is that the name of your album? 
<laughs> the fourth one, yeah. All right. Oh, how do we keep going? How do we miss three albums from Jason? <laughs> well, no, no, no. I've I've released zero. But oh, oh it, you're that building will be up the name of my fourth album. What's your first album? Well, it's got to be something with a single. I mean, <laughs> quads. You All can't right. come out with a quad title on album one. Oh, I get it. I get it. Um, <laughs> we're moving on. Hey, ballers. This is Alex from South Carolina. Is there any chance the Saints go into the 2021 season with Taysom Hill as their starting quarterback? And if they do, what is his dynasty value in a super flex league? Thanks. Bye. <sighs> There's definitely a chance. Uh, I agree. I mean, right now, it seems like you'd have to say it's between Taysom and Jameis, um, even though, you know, it they they could go after a different free agent. Those two guys could uh, leave, or, or Jameis could. Um, if he is the starter, though, I think his dynasty value is very good. Well, do, if Taysom Hill is the starter, what are the chances that he enters the season? Because he, he signed a, a two-year deal, mm -hmm. if I'm remembering right, last offseason. So he's on one year right now. What are the chances that he goes into the season without an extension? Well, I know that the Saints are not in a great cap space. Um, so unless that extension could actually help them cap-wise, and I, I don't believe it would looking at his contract, I think he would basically be on a one-year deal. So you'd have the danger – of from a dynasty outlook of saying this guy could just be a one-year quarterback um but my belief is that if Taysom Hill is the quarterback for the Saints they'll be a good team they'll win uh, the majority of their games and he will be back after that so I would I would view him as you know a top 15 quarterback because he runs the ball uh that's always good for fantasy but a top 15 with some risk yeah, there's ris the risk is just is the contract. If if Taysom Hill had an extension right now, he would easily be a top ten guy for me. Despite I know he's thirty one or going to be thirty one or something like that, really hasn't played much, but he was tremendous for football and he's going to run a bunch and he was actually pretty accurate. All right, uh, Andrew has a question: Which over the hill veterans still have several years left? of value in dynasty mm. Tom Pla Brady players who everyone <laughs> is dumping on because they're too old but can still provide solid value on the cheap yeah it's not even a joke like yeah, it's a joke it. but it's also the truth I genuinely right. believe Tom we're Brady talking has... about an extension right which is not a joke <laughs> it's like it sounds like a joke it's not um yeah Tom Brady probably has three solid years of fantasy production left and I don't know what genetic quirk you can have where you can win seven championships and gain a bigger chip on your shoulder, like I, like he's proven every he's done everything that should make anybody just rest on their laurels, and yet I know he's going to come back hungrier next year than he did this year. Well, because all he's his plants, he's always yeah. hungry. He's looking for meat. That's oh, what he did. He took sense. it out of his diet and was like, "I'm starving." Dude, there's only. <laughs> So other over the hill players, quote unquote, over the hill, is uh, Julio in that category? Yet he's still high priced, though. Um, I mean, you could take your shot on like Hilton. I think Ty Hilton. There's a, okay. Th there is a strong chance that Ty Hilton is DUN. Yep. There, there is a strong chance of that, but I think that he. I think what he has left, it could still be a, a value to NFL teams, and he could be a veteran and still give you a couple more years. Not, not what about like Melvin Gordon? One. Does he have value? Yeah. I mean, he's a starting running back right now, and so all starting running backs have value. I'm trying to think. Todd Gurley's done. Um, Correct. Trying to think of some older so, names. I, I think this could be true. I think Adam Thielen could still have a – like – two or three years left, and I can tell you right now that if you poke uh, the manager who has Adam Thielen, they look at him as, man, I've got to I've got to get something now because it's over. Right. He's, he's older, and I, I still think you're going to have two really solid years of fantasy production for Thielen. Okay. I can't really uh, – Gronkowski? I would. Is, does he even play? I don't so know. Does he come back? I, I things think went well so. for him this past week, past year, and things like every thing that could go right for his fantasy value went right. Yeah, he's so I, I not. would be out. He's not multi years of value left. You guys want uh, Zach Kurtz on your team? No thanks. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we've been beaten down. <laughs>
Sleeper tight end question. Is Adam Troutman a valid tight end sleeper going into next season? He is to Mike. Yeah. <laughs> he is to Mike. Yeah, I think he's, if you're calling him a tight end sleeper, yes, I think that is valid. And that's under the premise that Jared Cook would leave. Correct. All right. Uh, Dan in Ontario, would you trade A.J. Dillon? No. For the seventh? Oh. So you haven't even heard the rest <laughs> of the question. <laughs> There has to be an answer of yes, potentially, for that. For Tyreek Hill and Alvin Kamara. Was, oh, I shouldn't have committed. Yeah. For the seventh overall pick in the rookie draft. That's, that's a, a really good question. That's a super interesting question. Seven overall. I, I would say. A.J. Dillon will not have that backfield to himself. There is no chance of that. No. I, it, I, I think that what happens is Jamal Williams will be back, but it will be. He'll be passing downs back. It'll be 1A, 1B. Like. Dylan 1A? Yes. That that's how I see it shaking out. It it could absolutely go the other direction. Um if you need a running back, I would not trade him for the 107. Uh there's going to be probably a really great wide receiver there, but here's what we know about AJ Dillon. At least okay, see if you agree with me. I saw enough from AJ Dillon on an NFL field that tells me he belongs there and if he is given a shot to produce, he's going to be a good player. I agree. And Aaron Rodgers will open things up for his skill set. Meanwhile, the 107, that is not a given. We You have the rookie fever. I get it. I got the rookie fever too. But you could be drafting Jalen Rager at the 107. and It's such an interesting question because let me just – look at the outcomes here. Mm -hmm. What if they pay Aaron Jones? Sure. If yeah, they pay Aaron Jones, I don't know if we see Mike that day. I'll be, I'll be very sad. I mean <laughs> – because what's the dynasty value of A.J. Dillon at that moment in time? Uh, Almost well, non-existent. No, I completely disagree that it's non-existent. He's still the backup in Green Bay. Jamal, if, if, if Aaron Jones what's was What's the dynasty value of a backup running back is is the point, though? You're, I, you're one mishap away from having a starting running back for uh, a high-scoring offense. I'm in between where you guys are. If, if, if Aaron Jones comes back, Aaron Jones is the clear-cut front runner. He is the fantasy uh, option mm -hmm. however they won't bring back Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams I'd be surprised financially if they do that so that would at least vault AJ Dillon up to a more relevant combination because Jamal Williams was very relevant this last year but obviously not someone that you would love now I don't expect Aaron Jones to be back um, because they have AJ Dillon they might actually re-sign Jamal Williams much 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 cheaper and have a one-two punch there so Jamal Williams could be someone that you could target in a dynasty league. It's really just a matter of what do you believe is going to happen with Aaron Jones? Because Andy, you bring up the the perfect point. the The range of outcomes here for I the, mean Dylan could be a top ten type of upside if mm -hmm. if Jones left. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, but if he doesn't, then the trade value goes so far down. And but then you're, and you're still gambling on the one hundred and seven. Sure. So why well, the way I see it is why would you not gamble on the per? You have the proof. That if Dylan is the starting running back, he's going to be very good, and he's going to score a whole lot of touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, I it, it's silly because this is the this is obviously what the question is, but it kind of feels different if I were to think about drafting AJ Dylan at the one hundred and seven. Like I would definitely do that, right? So I I would rather have AJ Dylan. Well, we're gonna know, right? Yeah, by the time. Weeks. Yeah, I mean, uh, it'll be nice to f know after the f free agency, yeah, and then after the draft, that that 107 becomes much more clear as far as how many great uh, players landed in great landing spots. What's the first negotiation day where they can uh, whisper in the bushes about signing contracts? I like that they still call it the legal tampering. Why can't you just call it? Negotiations are Isn't open. That the, that's not the legal name for it, is it? I think that's I what think they still is, call yeah. it. What? Yes. Legal what? tampering. Legal tampering? So that's just people having a conversation. Why tempt We are people? definitely legally doing... Why do you have to clarify this is legal? Is this the purge? We got one day, night a year, it's okay? Yeah, and, and if it's legal, why is it tampering? It's, it's not. Tampering <laughs> is illegal. Like legal... That's why I don't think it, it can't be the real... I'm telling you, this is what they still call it. And it... It's you are saying this is a a a legal illegal activity. Yeah. All right, so legal the, legal jaywalking, legal stealing, also known as the crosswalk, legal jaywalking. 
That's right. That's right. So um, that the the legal tampering period starts on March fifteenth. Beware the Ides of March. That's two days. The seventeenth opens up free agency. Hmm. What do I? What does Ides mean? The middle, I believe. Really? Whew, I've never known. I've heard that phrase a lot. Huh. I've known I need to beware it. He's typing real quick yeah. on the whole <laughs> keyboard. <laughs> It just uh, 74th day in the Roman calendar corresponding to the 15th of March. Not so sure it means middle, but uh, uh, good. Is that the middle of March? Sure. Well, there you go. I stand by it. Um, Twitter question from uh, HoltWell33. Which starting quarterback would you uh, most want to go on a long road trip with? I feel like we've answered a question like this before. Hmm, probably. Well, let's answer it again. Road trip with an NFL player? Yeah. Mm. Starting Active. quarterback. Oh, starting quarterback. Let's Ooh. rank them from worst. Uh, worst, Russell Wilson. <laughs> That's all I got. Yeah, I don't think he would make my list. Um, so he'd be like, I'd have 31 and then... And that's it. Chandler Cantanzaro or Russell Wilson? Car oh, ride give, across the country. Give me that. Cantanzaro. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, We've really turned. I still think Baker would just be a blast. Yeah. I okay. would love to to just share a car ride share some jokes uh that'd be fun man i feel like baker like you'd you'd start out well and then he'd find like you'd be at a rest stop and you'd find some other people that are cooler than you and he'd be like i'm gonna go with them and he'd leave yeah so why don't you run in here uh we we need some more cheez it's and then you come out and he's gone uh i need somebody on my level of coolness i that won't leave me and it, it, uh, people make grimace but i've seen aaron Rodgers in enough interviews he is an he is interesting. He's an interesting person. You've seen him on. He's crushed on Jeopardy. Like he's also a a really smart dude. And is he's he sharp. a wild card? A little bit, yeah. but he's he's always just so laid back and casual in these in these interviews. That that's what I'm talking about. That's what I need in a road trip. I don't need like high levels of energy the entire time. We need ebbs and flows, but mostly just just sitting um, calmly chatting. No, get out of here. I'm going. I, we're cutting it up. We're having fun. We're laughing. It's it's me. I, I, I'm going to get a three-pack here. I'm going to take Baker Mayfield, Matthew Stafford, Cam Newton. We are going to have a blast. Oh, Cam, Cam Newton would be fantastic. I mean, that would You know he can't be. Yeah. Can't be hurt in a car accident either. No. It's no. impossible. That's, that's, don't let him be the driver because he has a skewed... Uh, you know his, his risk tolerance. His risk tolerance is he's not worried about an accident at all because he can't be hurt. Instagram question: Should head-to-head -head or most points be the tiebreaker for payoff uh, playoffs? Oh, most points. Most points. Yeah, I get the desire for the uh, the head-to-head, -head, but but I beat you. But I scored two hundred more points than you. It's uh, it, it, fantasy is far different than real NFL football. Reward the team that's been better longer. Yeah, I mean, that's the truth. Although it, it it feels real bad if you beat somebody in the regular season and then they get the spot over you. Yeah, but if they have that many more points than you, then things have gone sideways for that team several times throughout the season. Yeah, total points is pretty good for most things and most like an indicator for how a team's done, but not always. Sometimes you can have... Sure. You, you can, can have those weeks where, you know, the 200-point week and distorts things a little bit but all right uh keeper question from the website matt in pittsburgh uh do i keep jonathan taylor in the fifth or stefan diggs in the sixth <laughs> ppr league oh i'm taking stefan diggs as am i you're so in a real is it because of the ppr um, P uh, the, PPR the, or half PPR, I would. Because the draft cost it whatever, if I, a fifth or a sixth round pick. In So in redraft, you're drafting Stephon Diggs before you take Taylor? I probably would not draft Stephon Diggs before I would take Taylor, you know, because of where they will land in ADP and, and where I need to grab each player. But I do think Diggs is the safer option here. Um, You know, there's in a, in a, in a PPR, Diggs was – so consistent, so great. Now has another year with Josh Allen, and and I would I would say those players will go very near each other in the draft. So give me the give me the run, one round value difference, and I've still got the 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 reason why it's a little easier is because I've still got my first and my second round picks available to go after running backs. I'd take Taylor. You both make interesting points. 
I would go Stefan Diggs. All right. Instagram, what do we do with DJ Chark in a dynasty league? Oh, Hang man. on to him or shop him for a draft pick? <sighs> hang on to him. I think I would hang on to him, yeah. Because if you shop him for a draft pick, then you are, again, kind of like what Mike was saying, there's risk built into that. But the upside, now realize, you know, Chark could play You're this year. You're not getting a top five pick for DJ Chark. In no, which case, you, holding on to him is the better You'll call. probably get a second-round pick right. for DJ Chark. Which is well below a 50% hit rate in the second round. And so I would say DJ Chark's potential to hit again in his career is higher than 50%. I would agree. And and to be relevant this year will happen. Now, there's a realistic outcome here where at the end of this year, I believe this would be the, the final year of his contract, he moves on, and that and that stinks. But you'll have value this year in DJ Chark. And then you have the if it if it's good enough value, they resign him, and now he's locked to a great quarterback for a long time. All right, uh, we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the podcast. Calvin Ridley signed NFL logo football right now. The auction price is twenty bucks. Ooh, baby! It ends on Wednesday night. Saquon Barkley signed jersey inscribed with the twenty eighteen NFL Rookie of the Year. Is currently at fifty dollars. Oh man, that's Wednesday night as well. There are hundreds of daily auctions. Check them out right now. Go to pristineauction.com. Use the code Ballers. Get a ten dollar credit. It's as simple as that. All right, that'll do it for today's episode of the podcast, and we'll be back with you on Thursday. And that'll do it. That's it. It's over. We'll see you next it's time, everybody. Over. Stay safe. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.